Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time for the Power Rankings show, the Tennis Talk Power Rankings for another week. But first of all, we're going to go through the players that won last week because we didn't actually have that many tournaments last week. The WTA didn't play at all last week. So let's go through the past results for the last week. So the only individual tournament that was played last week was Monte Carlo and Stefanos Tsitsipas. He got through winning his second Monte Carlo in a row, 6-3, 7-6 against Fakina. It was a very big surprise getting into the final. And there are some changes to the power rankings because of these results. But let's start with the WTA rankings for this week. So as you probably could have guessed, there's no change to the rankings whatsoever because none of the ladies played on the WTA. There was Billie Jean King Cup, but they're not worth any points. So we still have Iga Swiatek at world number one and by a fair margin as well. So I wouldn't expect her to lose any points anytime soon. Over at the WTA finals race, same thing, no changes to the finals race because no players gained any points this week. Shvontek still on top of those rankings as well. Had a phenomenal season. She will be playing next week though, so let's keep an eye on how she does in Stuttgart next week. Taking a look at the ATP rankings for this week, and there aren't any changes to the top 10 with Djokovic staying at number one, only 10 points ahead of Daniel Medvedev. And even though Stefan Tsitsipas won Monte Carlo, he didn't change in the rankings, so he stays at number five in those rankings. Having a look at the A to B finals race, and here are some big changes. Tsitsipas, he goes to number two in the finals race, taking Elkariz's spot, pushing Medvedev and Fritz down as well. And Rublev, he goes up one spot higher than Eliasim after playing well in Monte Carlo, when Eliasim didn't play well. And we've got two players in the nine and 10 spot, Hercatch, he made the quarterfinals in Monte Carlo, so he got up five spots higher than last week to number nine. And Zverev, after making the semifinals in Monte Carlo, he's gone up 10 spots to number 10 in the ATP finals race. So the finals race is starting to take some shape, with a lot of familiar names starting to find their way into that top eight for the ATP finals at the end of the year. Okay, let's go over to the power rankings now for another week. And coming in number 20 this week in the power rankings, Simona Halep, two spots lower than last week. Not because she didn't play bad last week, because she actually didn't play at all, it's because some players played really well in her absence. So she goes down two spots to number 20. Fritz, he comes in at number 19, which is the same as last week. So he doesn't change at all. Had a decent week over in Monte Carlo. Hubi Her catches in at number 18. He's dropped down two spots lower than last week, despite making it to the quarterfinals of Monte Carlo. Number 17, we've got Ostapenko. She didn't play last week, so she stays in her spot. But we have a new person at 16. It's Von Drusova. She's gone in to number 16 spot, new to the power rankings, and that's because she beat Emma. Emma Raducanu in the Billie Jean King Cup. So even though that's not worth any points on the WTA, it does take some value when we come to the power rankings. So because she had a very good week for the Czech Republic and beating Raducanu, she gets into the number 16 spot. At number 15, we've got Contivate, who drops down one spot lower because she didn't play last week. And another debutant to the power rankings we have, Alexander Zverev. Now, he had a decent week last week, got to the semifinals of Monte Carlo, and he finally makes his way in. A lot of people are asking, where is... Zverev in these rankings, you know, he's had a pretty decent year despite some poor losses. But finally, Zverev, number 14, he is into the power rankings. In at number 13 is Osaka. She's dropped down one spot lower than last week because she didn't play last week. In at number 12 is Medvedev. Again, didn't play last week, so he got bumped down one spot. At number 11, we've got Ketchmenovic, who has had a great season. But again, didn't play last week. He is playing next week. So we'll see how he goes next week if he stays in that top 20 rankings. Coming in at number 10, we have Badosa, who didn't play last week for Team Spain, but has been bumped down one ranking spot because there is a new person into the top 10 this week. Coming in at number nine is Andre Rublev. He's gone down three spots lower than last week, and that's because he lost in the third round of Monte Carlo, and he lost to Yannick Sinner. Now, Yannick Sinner's a good player, we all know that, but because he lost to a player that is lower than him in the rankings, it affected his rankings. So, Rublev, he's gone down number nine. Coming in number eight is Riley Opelka. Now, Opelka didn't play last week, but because of a bit of a point shuffle, he lost a fair few points, and a lot of players did better than him last week in his absence. So, he's gone down three spots to number eight. Coming in at number seven is Maria Sakkari, staying at number seven. She's been at number seven every week for the power ranking. She's playing next week, so expect her ranking to change. Coming in at number six is Belinda Bencic. She's gone down two spots lower than last week. Didn't play last week, and in her absence, some players played well, and that's why she has dropped down into number six spot. Coming in at number five is Yannick Sinner. So Yannick Sinner, he's gone up three spots higher than last week after a very good week in Monte Carlo, obviously beating Rublev along the way. That helped his ranking and only just losing to Zverev in the quarterfinals. So some very good wins for Sinner have boosted his ranking back. And coming in at number four, we have a new debutant to the power rankings and it's Stefanos Tsitsipas. A lot of people are asking, where the hell is Tsitsipas? Why is he not in the rankings? 
He is now. After winning Monte Carlo, of course, he beat guys like Schwartzman, uh, Zverev along the way, Fakina in the final. Uh, he beat some very good players along the way. So that is why he's at number four in the power rankings. Finally, getting into that top part of the rankings, as you would expect. Coming in number three, Alcarez stays at number three despite losing to Korda very early on. It didn't affect his ranking enough to have him drop down at all, but he is playing next week, and another poor week might result in a bad ranking next week. So Alcarez stays in the top three for this week. Coming in number two is Rafa Nadal. Didn't play last week, so his ranking didn't change at all. We're expecting Rafa to come back, hopefully in a couple weeks' time. Rafa stays at number two, and you guessed it, for a third straight week in the power rankings, Iga Sviantec. Now, she didn't boost her ranking points too much in the power rankings because she, even though she played a couple of matches, she played a couple of players that she should definitely have beaten. But next week's a tough week. She's got Stuttgart. If she loses next week or if the streak gets broken, she is at a risk of possibly losing top spot. So Iga Sviantec's at number one for now, but with the return of Rafa in a few weeks and obviously the tournaments are getting a bit more intense, Sviantec has to do well next week to keep her top spot. So there you have it, the power rankings for another week and the normal rankings as well. No change to the normal rankings, but there's always going to be a change to the power rankings. As we see there, we've got a few new players in. Finally, City Passons Vera making their appearance in the top 20 power rankings after a good week in Monte Carlo. But let me know down in the comments below. Who are you most shocked about? Are you still shocked that Sviantec's still at the top there? Are you shocked that Alcarez didn't drop lower? I'm a little bit shocked that Alcarez didn't get, uh, I guess, punished for losing so early on in Monte Carlo, but I guess because he played so well the previous weeks, he deserves to stay in that top three for now, but he needs to have a good week in Barcelona, otherwise he might drop down the ranks, but let me know down in the comments below who you're most shocked about being in the power rankings this week.